Okay, guys, the recording has started. Um, Rose, do you want to do an introduction, or are we just going to dive right in? Sure, I can I can do an introduction. All right, perfect. Thanks, Rose. Let's, we, we, we can get started now. Okay, great. Thanks, Len. Okay, hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us for our monthly uh, Harvest webinar series. Uh, this month, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on a specific feature within CA Harvest SCM, um, a collaboration feature um, called uh, Code Review or Peer Review. And we have Paramesh here to walk us through that. And, and then we're going to have a discussion about our new uh, Doc Ops initiative uh, for CA Harvest Software Change Manager as well. And we have Gayathri here who will be um, discussing that with all of you. So I'm going to turn it over to Paramesh. Uh, thank you, Earl. Uh, good morning and good evening to all. Yeah, uh, today we are going to discuss about uh, uh, PDU or code review part uh, using CRS to software change manager. Yeah, moving to next slide. Yeah. yeah, agent of this one is uh, what is the code review and why code review is so important and uh, how CA Harvest SCM uh, supporting this code review feature. And apart from the one, we'll have a walkthrough and we'll have a demo. Uh, in the demo, we'll discuss complete code, uh, peer review part. Uh, how can we start peer review? How can we initiate? And how, what is the complete code we'll discuss? And also, we'll uh, discuss about the mail template. Uh, whenever we initiate any review or request, few mail notifications will come. Uh, we have <laughs> will go and come from a reviewer and a, a review requester. We'll discuss about that mail template, and also we'll discuss about uh, generating of peer uh, review reports. Okay. And uh, moving to the next slide. Yeah, what is code review? In fact, uh, code review is a systematic examination of source code. Sometimes it is also referred to as peer review. And the main purpose of this one to find mistakes overlooked in initial development phase uh, to improve overall quality of uh, our software. Yeah. Why this code review? To comply to enterprise level coding standards, to improve code readability and maintainability, to share knowledge and learning among the team, and also to identify potential bugs at early stages of development. And we have a lot of other uses of this code review, and these are mainly important ones I discussed. Yes, this is a brief discussion about why code review. And what CRS SCM is doing in the code review part? CA Harvest SCM is coming up with a internal integrated peer review tool and uh, it is providing a lot of features and uh, most mainly important of them is one is uh, we can provide we can do package level reviews and also it supports multiple reviewers. Um, so I can send my code to review to n number of people and making one of them as primary. And lot of and we'll get continuous email notification whenever any reviewer has been changed or any due date has been changed or anything anything has been changed in the review object. Complete email notifications will get, and also to provide reviewer to provide inline comments, and also you can provide attachments like uh, design spec. Uh, uh, high level design spec or low level design spec, whatever the documents you want to attach as a part of uh, comment, you can attach. And indicate, this is indicated, the tool is indicated with uh, not only Workbench but also Eclipse plugin. And uh, it is embedded within HCM project lifecycle. Okay. How this flow will be? <coughs> Uh, whenever any developer or review requester completes his coding, 
He creates and assigns that uh, code for review to reviewer. That reviewer may have one or more than one, and uh, one of them must be a primary reviewer. And once review requester creates and assigns that uh, code review object, the reviewers will get mail notification. And the reviewer can log in into the system and you can check and you can log in the code and you can inspect the code and you can provide inline comments. And if he is, if he is not working with this code what given by review to a requester, you can reject that one. And if he wants, he can accept also. If it is if he is working with that code changes, he can accept. It has assume he is not okay with that code changes, the code changes developed by a developer or user requester. He can give inline comments and he can reject that code changes. That complete mail notification is sent back to review requester. Re review requester will see the comments given by reviewer and he implements the comments and he will update the same in the review object. And once he updates the same, again main notification will send to all reviewers. And reviewer will recheck that uh, code changes done by review requester. And if he is okay with those code changes, he can approve that code changes. So all these things you can see, you can do with our RSSM peer review tool. So, yeah, and moving to this uh, next slide. Uh, this is the review information, and whenever I double click on review object, uh, I can see all this information like uh, package name and who is the requester, and what is the data date, and what is the due date, status, and the list of reviewers you can see, and uh, you can vote all those things. We'll have a discussion, complete discussion about this one whenever we are doing demo. And moving to next slide. So here uh, we have two uh, images, and uh, first image is what I'm trying to explain is all code changes are highlighted. So by seeing that code changes, the highlighted lines, we can identify what are the changes done from first version to current version. And uh, what about uh, the second diagram means, let us assume I have 10 files or 10 versions in my package, and while reviewing, I can change the status. Once I complete, I can mark uh, completed. And uh, once I change, once I, once I'm doing any changes, uh, uh, sorry, once I'm doing the review, and I can put the status as in progress. And if it is not started, I can put it as pending. So like we have marks, um, that red and yellow and cor cor <coughs> corresponding colors and it explains about whether it is pending state, whether it is in progress state, or it is completed state. So, and uh, we can generate the uh, peer review reports also uh, by using the dashboard, fire dashboard, and it, uh, it tells about total number of peer reviews and total number of closed peer reviews and total number of peer reviews, uh, reviews requested with the expired, expired due date and total number of peer reviews without any comments. All these things we can see and we can generate a bar graph by using what tool. Any questions so far? Okay. Uh, so we move to demo part. Okay, we're just waiting for you to share for the demo. 
There we go. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, it's coming in now. I will start with the uh, uh, fresh work then. So I have two users. Uh, one is developer and another is a reviewer. What developer will do means he will do some code changes uh, in a package and he will send that uh, package for review to reviewer. A reviewer will see that code changes and he, uh, he will provide his comments and he will update that uh, <coughs> review object. And corresponding notification, or notification mail will be received by Received to developer, and uh, later developer he will implement his uh, uh, his uh, the reviewer comment, and he is close the he is again uh, sent for the review. What reviewer will do is if reviewer will, is happy with the code changes done by developer, he reviewer will close that review task. So, uh, yeah, part of our use case first. Is I am logging into the system by using developer account. Okay. And here I have a package called pack one. And it has these versions. <coughs> in in for Five files it has, and he wants to send that file package to viewer to review this one. So just right clicking and uh, requesting that uh, peer review. Now I am creating new preview request. Here, this test symbol will tell what uh, to whom you want to send for review. So I am sending review for reviewer and this. So I have chosen two reviewers to review my code. The star mark part, the star mark represent is the primary reviewer, and the second one is the secondary reviewer. So even I can change primary reviewer and secondary reviewer by using this icon. So now reviewer is my primary reviewer, RST is secondary reviewer. So to promote this package, Primary reviewer should vote and approve this package. And this minus reference to remove users from the assigned to list. Even I can view in due date. I can view due date by selecting here. And I can provide some general command. And I can send email. And I am giving OK. So just the email is generated and uh, so we receive that email now. Yeah, this is the email. Uh, what this email is saying? This email is saying the requester's name is developer. And the broker name is uh, this one, project name, state name, and the package. This is waiting for review. So, how to configure this username all those things will have it. I have to like how to configure this username all those things. So, it can be configured in a file called saru.arc which is located in SEM file, RST SEM home. And this is the command we need to provide. And HSMTP minus M and my server name and the port number and the username and the username of the main. So, 
and also I can in the preview we have I can see the requested reviews. So still I'm in a developer account. So right now in developer account, two preview review objects are in open. One is 18 and 19. So our 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 one is 19. So it is a this review object is first created uh, uh, recently and uh, now what I will do is I will log into reviewer account and I will review the code and I will update my comments to developer. So this time I am discarding the broker to connect again with the reviewer account. Reviewer account. And password. We can review <coughs> come can come to again pre review tab and we can go to assign reviews and you can see that's 19 object. This is the pre review object latest created. And if now I can mark it as in progress and I can go I can double click here to see the modification what it did. So this is the line modified by him. Right now it is comparing with the second version. Latest version is third version and is this tool is comparing with the second version. If I want to compare with previous version, I can go like this. I can choose version one. Otherwise even I can navigate. Yeah, like this I can compare. Even I can navigate by using this arrow mark. This is if I want to come this is second version. If I want to compare with previous version, I can compare it. And now I will ask I'll, to provide inline comments, press double click this one or you can press this plus button, this comment button. Now reviewer wants to know why this line is added. So why this line is added and once you press the button, so this will be added. This will be added as a single comment, and you can move to next next difference by using these two navigate button, and again you can give you can remove this line if you don't want. So just you can do comments like this. And you can close this one. And after you can be viewed as this marked as this completed. Uh, these icons or these gifts are not mandatory for process, just for your for developer or regular references only. Uh, not for system. And you can double click on the review object. You can update, they place two comments. Yeah. Um, as we added two comments, you can give this update and you can save. As you, immediately as you save that uh, pre review object, mail will be generated. Now, logging into this broker. I am discarding and I want to log in with the developer account. And just log in. Previews. 
and request a review. Go to this review object and you can double click. So you can see like reviewer has rejected and the harvest is not yet started is coming. So once you double click this one, you can see what are the comments provided here. So you provided two comments. This is one comment and this is another comment. You can double click here to see the comment or you can go to here and you can open the comment from here also. So you can give response to that one. I want to display on, on some. So like you can answer that one. And uh, you can he ask it, you can view due date, new due date. And you can see. So now I am discarding the broker as I want to changes from the reviewer account and uh, so in the reviewer class account you can go back go to our center And double click this one. So you can see that comment given by developer. And if he is okay with the, these comments, he can he can over these changes, and he can close this one. So this is the complete life cycle of uh, this review management. So uh, developer can uh, send a review request and uh, a reviewer can uh, see and he can get the reject or accept the two one. And he can work for the change, he can work for the changes and even he can close that review object. Uh, any questions so far? No questions. Uh, and also in this tool, we have an option search for reviews. So I can give try broker name, and I can give project name. I can I can give find. So it will list out all open and close projects. Even I can uh, search based on that the assigned, or you can search by created by all of them. And to see only open, I'll use find. So only one peer review object is in open, and its name is back one review 18. And also I can see report by typing this one, report project dashboard, here I have multiple options. Now I am interested only with the peer review, and I can say OK. So it will generate the graph. This is a bulk report, and here I can see number of peer reviews, a number of closed reviews, number of reviews without comments, and number of reviews with the due date. All these things I can see from here. And regarding the mail. So if you observe that mail, what we received as a part of notification, here, this name, template, this is customized template. 
we can view this template at workbench, go to tools and preferences, go to preview part, and here I can give template type. Here I given HTML and uh, here I given HTML code to create the table and to, to fill the data. So like uh, I can give for both notifying creation new object and notifying code review close also. So both templates I can give. So this is about uh, peer review and its flow and its usage. Um, anyone has any questions? No question, but I just wanted to point out that the closed notification misspelled notification. So I was going to have you correct it while you were in there, but that's something you can do at another time. Uh, hi, Rose. Uh, could you please repeat it? Uh, we, uh, it was not clear what you mentioned. Could you please repeat it again? Sure. The The email message that you received to indicate that the peer review was closed, the closed notification, the, the word notification in that email message, I believe, was misspelled. Yeah. Missing the key. Yeah, it's and I noticed the last the last item that you showed was the the HTML or the 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 way that you could go in and modify that message. So I was going to have you correct it while you were in there. No. Yeah. Right, right in there. Mm-hmm. There it is. Yeah. P-A-T-I-O-N. There you go. Yeah. Very good. Uh, now, now uh, I will create a new, new object. By yeah, right now he's in developer account. So I'm assigning developer as the reviewer. And so now developer will uh, act as the reviewer. Discarding. Now, so, This is a creation one. Now I'm going to close this one. So just closing this one. Uh, we'll wait a couple of minutes. So we'll get made. Yeah, it is the uh, correct spelling. Very good. Yeah, thank you. Uh, any other questions, sir? Yeah. And yeah. I don't and, see uh, any. Parmesh is going to hand over to Gayatri now for the next Okay. Session. 
Okay, very good. Thank you, Parmesh. Can you make a guy a presenter? Yep, I got it. Thanks, guys. Okay, that was a great um, demo of the peer review. Thank you very much for that, Parmesh. Uh, thank you, Rose. And there we go. Okay, harvest documentation has evolved. Take it away, Gayathri. And you're on mute. Hello? Hi, everyone. Can, can you hear you. me now? There you go. Thanks. Yeah. Um, good morning, good evening. Uh, this is Gayatri from Information Services Group. Um, Today's session, I will just give you a brief overview and introduction to the DOPOPS platform and uh, see how does the software change manager, the documentation for this has evolved from a bookshelf to the DOPOPS platform. How I'll just take a quick uh, thing about it. Yeah, that agenda for today's session is what the DOPOPS is all about and why DocOps and the benefits followed by a demo and Q&A. Okay, what DocOps is all about? DocOps is a cool cousin of DevOps. It isn't a tool or process. It's just a model. It starts with a highly collaborative content authoring platform that allows us to continually develop product information even after the product is GA, instead of having to wait until the next release. Having said this, um, in our uh, prior uh, mode of uh, document delivery, wherein we used to uh, provide bookshelves, uh, we had this PDF and HTML docs uh, at our product GA and then moved to the next release. The problem with these docs were plugged by support, support team who wrote knowledge based articles to address the things that information services team uh, couldn't address prior to GA, I mean by GA, or uh, did not address successfully. So this practice forced customers to search multiple databases for the answers to their questions. Now, the DocOps platform addresses all these issues. It lets support services, education, and customers collaborate with the information services team on the development of the content throughout, meaning the entire product life cycle. So that's where we can say DocOps is content agility. It addresses content agility. So why DocOps? Our DocOps platform is hosted on a wiki. So why wiki? Because it creates a positive customer experience. We combine the information customers need with an easy search mechanism and tie it together with a means for two-way communication. The wiki is accessible from any device, including your smartphones and tablets. Uh, it actually addresses the responsive web design. It provides intuitive searching and up-to-date information. So it's a win-win for both customers and for the corporate. So what is that the DocOps platform addresses? The DocOps uh, platform has been having a few historical problems which is, I mean, sorry, the prior uh, documentation has been having uh, some historical problems that the DocOps platform addresses, which would, uh, uh, which are like 
poor customer experiences regarding the inability to find information and calling support for answers. The search is now improved. The information is consolidated on one platform. The wiki also provides easy language translation, which will save CA money. Of course, for Harvest, we don't have any translation per se, but this will address for the products that have this translation localization involved in. The wiki also uh, allows content to be updated in the real time. And the benefits include the collaboration through comments, commenting by the customers, stakeholders, both internal and external. Uh, and as the content delivery is through a web browser platform, the customers actually need not wait um, for a next release to have their doc updates to be made because uh, whenever they refresh it, they have the latest updates in one go. And the uh, findability of the content in go on Google and uh, external internal search, uh, searches. And it has a very powerful keyword search mechanism. Apart from this, uh, as I have told earlier, uh, it has access to additional resources to support education, videos, communities, and all of them. So in one sentence, if you can say what the Doc Ops is all about, we can easily conclude that it's a wiki platform and it's a single source for technical content where customers and members of CA support and engineering services can review, comment on the product documentation, which should enhance the findability and the accuracy of the product content. So um, with that said, uh, I'll just take you to the demo. Any questions so far? Questions, anybody? Don't see any. Okay. Uh, so I'm just accessing the wiki from the product. See, this is the say how this works in. And let's go to the workbench uh, bookshelf. So far, we have been for all the prior releases, and even for V13, we have the conventional mode of delivery with uh, bookshelf, wherein we have all the content placed in uh, form of books, guides. Excuse me, Gaia 3. Gaia 3, um, we're not seeing anything other than the one slide that says demo. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's okay. Just wanted to make sure that you're sharing. There we go. It looks like it's changing now. Okay. Now we're seeing the wiki. Yeah. Sorry okay. Thank you. So actually I'm accessing the uh, workbench, Harvest the same workbench, and I'm trying to access the wiki from product. Okay, so, so far we have been having a traditional form of uh, content delivery in the form of bookshelf wherein the guides were placed in the form of PDF and HTML. So going forward from V13 and on and further releases, we will no longer have this traditional bookshelf. However, the content is now placed in the form of a wiki, the Doc Ops platform, and when you just click it, So this is the CA Harvest SEM Doc Ops platform that's going to be GA along with the product. So this is how the product content is being delivered now. Instead of having a, in the form of guides, I mean, we are coming out of the book paradigm and the same information is being placed in a useful faces manner. If you see here, release notes, installing, using, upgrading, administrating, messages, command response, SDK, and additional resources. All of these facets contain the information uh, that have been segregated. Uh, I mean, if you uh, if you take as an uh, user user role as an administrator, and when you are performing a task, to perform one particular task in earlier form of uh, content delivery, the particular piece of content has been segregated in various guides. 
in, uh, for example, an administrator and a user guide and some of the information in the implementation guide. But now with this kind of uh, content, strategy, uh, content delivery, we have restructured the content in such a way that to perform one task by one user role, the entire information is placed in a single standalone HTML in a form of either scenario or in an article form, along with some rich media content like videos embedded in them. I'll just show you. This particular uh, how this, this particular doc of platform you can actually access through the product that I have shown you, or even you can access directly from docops.ca.com. Uh, however, uh, because the product has not yet been GA, so it's still not available over here. Once the product is GA, you can actually see it from uh, the dashboard. So you can actually search for a particular information like you get you get to see I mean when you actually search for a keyword called mobile approval, you get to see an article, the scenario actually, where uh, as an end user you can you know the entire information, end-to-end -end information that you require to actually perform um, this package approval using mobile app. So this is a scenario wherein it uh, gives you with an, a pictorial form and it gives you the entire list of tasks that you can perform using that particular feature. Along with it, you have a video which is embedded along with this. So, which takes you to the YouTube. So, uh, whenever a customer would like to actually comment or provide feedback or would like to say something about this particular documentation, they can put in their comments over here. Here you go. The moment the, a customer would comment or provide feedback using this comment feature, it is being notified to the uh, writer's group and they can take immediate action on that. I mean, immediate action can be uh, correcting the sentence or providing information or taking it to the backlog. How, I mean, based on the request, uh, request and type of the information that's been commented by the customer. So along with this, you can actually as a customer, you can actually watch this page. Meaning, uh, if you would like to know more updates or what's happening on that particular feature documentation, you can always select to watch this page or watch all content in this page. Watch this page <coughs> would let you get all the updates, uh, email notifications about any kind of updates that's being made to this particular page. And uh, clicking watch all content in this page uh, would let you notify about all the changes that have been made to this particular harvest space. Along with this, along with the school feature, you can, I mean, I mean, if you would like to have your documentation in an offline mode and would like to read it in a leisure, you can also go and click the PDF. PDF is like, uh, it's mostly updated, but it's not as current to the online version because it's been a cache PDF. But most of the times it's like the still the most important, most latest uh, PDF will be uh, saved in here caching. Along with the PDF version, you have EPUB version, which can be, which you can actually have it on your smart devices. 
Any questions? Sorry, Gayathri, what was the EPUB? EPUB is for your uh, smart devices. Okay. okay. Along with that, uh, you have something additional, additional resources, which would actually give you some additional information, not just about the product technical documentation, but about uh, the related information, uh, like uh, knowledge base articles and some of the educational courses for this particular uh, product and previous release bookshelves, your data sheet, compatibility matrix, LinkedIn, success stories. So all of these additional resources pertaining to your product is also available over here. And along with that, to your left pane, sorry, to your right pane of the space, you have something called more resources, which would actually take the uh, RSS feeds from your uh, community. I mean, the latest uh, trending information is always being shown up here. I noticed that when you brought that up. I noticed that right away because I just posted the join us now when we started the webinar and it showed up there. That's yeah. that's very, very nice. Yeah, along with that, and because uh, for Harvest, since this is the first release of uh, DocOps platform, we have only 13.0 over here under versions. Um, going forward, uh, as we progress with the IRs into incremental releases 1, 2, and 3, we will have all those versions listed over here. So a customer, if uh, he's interested in looking into the content for 13.0 in specific, he can actually select the particular version and then check for the content. And based on the versions that he selects, the content is displayed over here. Okay. Guy three, can I ask a question real quick? Yeah, please. If you could go back to the home page. Um, yeah, one second. There we go. If you could expand that. Uh, I think you've, you've great presentation. You've covered all the, the key points of Doc Ops in the space. But could you show them, maybe click on contents to show them that they can search for content, but we also have a navigational tree such that if you're someone that likes to look for content via a tree, um, you can do that as well. Yeah. So we, uh, our user experience folks have told us to give folks multiple ways to get a content. So if you like to search for content via a text string, Sky3 gave you a great demo on how you can do that. However, some people prefer to navigate via a tree, so we give you that option as well. Yeah, thanks for that. Excellent. Looks like you got everything covered here, guys. Very well done. Looks great. Do you have more slides, Gaia3? Um, that's it. Um, I don't have. Yeah, I just, uh, I just have one summary slide. <clears throat> There we go. We're back on the slide deck. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So, so far, whatever we have discussed and presented in the demo is, I mean, how, uh, what the doc ops is and how uh, it actually transformed the documentation delivery mo model, followed by the demo having uh, shown you the list of items that are shown here, accessing your documentation from products and finding content watching the space, reviewing the content, and get uh, printable and offline content. So with that, uh, I'm done. Uh, anyone has any questions on that? I don't see any questions coming in. Okay, I think that covered everything that we had planned to present today. All right. Um, I, all right, so I guess we can wrap up then. Uh, 
Everybody, thank you very much for, for the great presentations today, and thank you to our attendees. Um, we'll get this um, replay re recorded and um, posted later in the community, and then we'll also um, get a, a, a webcast recap published later this week. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Have a great day, everybody. You too. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Gayatri. Thanks, Parmesh. Thank you.